We had Logan Paul and Rey Mysterio for the U.S. title, and they were having a uh, good match. It was a good match. Yeah. Yep. This was uh, this was not your usual like uh, Logan Paul match with nothing but a bunch of crazy high spots with Ricochet. No, not not at all, really. This was more of uh, get the just heat on the guy. and just a professional wrestling match. Yep. So finally, they're... Uh, they're they're fighting outside and they go up top and Ray hits a sunset flip power bomb hits a code red and then some dude Who's who was described identified. as and I quote a fool from Logan Paul's entourage that's all he was described as he's outside and he hands Logan brass knucks but Ray bumps him and the knucks go flying so the guy goes to get the knucks again but Santos jumps the rail and he prevents it. And Santos is a complete idiot. He takes the Nux and puts them back in the ring. Well, Dave. Right. Maybe he is, and maybe he's not. Yes. Because he chased this guy away, and he happened to put the Nux, yes, right there on the apron, right in front of Logan Paul. Yeah. Logan grabs them, and he KOs Ray out of midair, and he gets the pin. So the announcers didn't mention it. Like, nobody said anything. But, like, if you've been following the storyline, oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. question probably... is, did this guy leave those there on purpose, or was it an accident? Well, I'm and, sure uh, it sure looked run... like he left them there on purpose to me. I'm sh- I would suspect in the long run that's the story. Yes. But, but for the short run, it looked like when he did that, the moment he did that, it's like, what an idiot. The guy's going to grab the knucks and knock out Ray, which well, is yeah, maybe he was exactly an idiot. Exactly what happened. He did it on purpose. Yeah. So, yeah, Logan's a champion, which... Most people expected, you know that that weigh-in deal. You know when they did that weigh-in and, and and everything, it really hit me when I met. I mean, probably when I met Ray Mysterio, le- legitimately, he was probably 110 pounds. But that doesn't really count because he was very very young. But when he was in AAA, I remember, um, you know when, and this is this is when he was a top star there. You know, not the top star, but you know a re- a real big star there. You know, when he's in his 20s already, he's not like he's 17 or anything. And I remember when night we were just talking, and I go like, you know, what do you actually weigh? He said 62 kilograms. I remember that. So which is under 36 pounds. So he's put on 40 pounds at his height. I mean, it's like he has no business weighing that much. You know, I mean, especially, especially being older. Um, you know, and and with all the injuries and everything. But um, you know, that's the mentality of being in wwe you got to be big you got to look strong so i mean i get why he does it but it's like for ray mysterio you know it's like what does ray mysterio need to be 40 pounds heavier than he was when he was at his at his peak well that was his actual weight it's also uh maybe he's maybe he's one uh maybe he's 163 and they said 175 would not be the first time they've lied about weight yeah but yeah, this match, uh, the one thing I will say about this match also is this Logan Paul. It's like we've talked about, you know, how how uh, actually amazing he is, given he's had like eight matches or something oh, like he's that. Fa- he's fantastic. But, he's, uh, a na- he's, a na- he's a natural. Besides just like being a natural and everything like that, I mean, there were a couple spots in this match where we saved shit Ray's was life going once. wrong, and man, that guy jumped he- in there and he made things work, which is well, something that a guy with eight matches virtually can never do. But I mean, like, like Ray went for that Quebrada, and he was he wasn't he was going near head first. Guy. He and was Logan freaking flew in. He like slid in on his knees to catch this guy and save his life. Yeah, I mean, this was uh, he did a hell yeah, of a job. Ray, in this Ray, match. Ray really owes him, you know, some thanks on that one because Ray could have really been hurt on that move. And we had Io Sky and Bianca for the women's title, and uh, match was going along fine. And then uh, there was no, the thing with this match is um, from from like a, a wrestling standpoint, just the wrestling that they did, it was it was good. I mean, kind of even pretty good. But this was the match. The crowd just decided they didn't care. I mean, it was no heat at all from the, in, in the entire match. It was, it was just dead. So finally, uh, Bailey gets involved and Bianca takes her out and they're outside and EO accidentally clobbers Bailey. She throws Bianca into the ring. Bianca goes to give Bailey the KOD onto the table. But all of a sudden, who should return but Kyrie Sane? 
And because it's it's Riyadh, I mean, she's she's covered head to toe. She's not in her pirate did, pe- outfit. Pe- people didn't know who she was. At either. first, yeah, they had they had no idea who she was early. But then they did like zoom in on her face on the big screen, and you did hear a pop when people finally figured out who she was to a degree. And uh, she posted Bianca. Bianca's almost getting counted out, but then she flies in at nine, only to get hit by a moonsault and pinned. And then uh, Kyrie and and Io, they stomp on Bianca afterwards. Kyrie gives her the flying elbow, and they cut outside, and Bailey is shocked. And they note that uh, years and years ago, the person who injured Kyrie and sent her out of WWE was, in fact, Bailey. So yeah. they're bringing up a storyline from years ago to uh, to put this thing together. Well, here. I mean, it fits into where they're going, I guess. Yes. We had Cody Rhodes and Damian Priest. Crowd did very much get behind Cody. A lot of Cody chants during this match. He was very, very over, yeah. Yeah, and uh, there was actually a funny spot where, as much as they love Cody, these fans all over the world, they just want their damn tables. Oh, and, yeah. And so uh, there's a table there, and uh, Priest and Cody end up on the table, and Priest ends up giving them the reckoning on the table, but the table does not break. So the crowd starts chanting one more time, at Damian Priest. And so Damian Priest looks at him and he says, not happening. Mm-hmm. And that got heat. They chanted, you suck. They were so angry that he would not break that table. So Finn Balor runs down to the ring, takes the ref. JD hits the ring. He gets laid out. They get uh, all of the guys running in. And Cody Superman. Dom he... finally comes out with a chair and Jey Uso beats him up. So Priest is left all alone. Cody hits him with a cutter off the ropes, three crossroads, and pins him. So that should it's a set up... a very good match. Oh, yeah, really good. It should set up... Um, yeah, I would say second best match on the show. I say this should set up a tag team title match, you know, with uh, Cody and Jey Uso against Priest and Balor, since Cody won clean, and obviously, you know, really pushing Cody's on that, on that road, you know, the road that leads to Roman Reigns. Well, the main event was Roman Reigns and L.A. Knight for the Universal title. And uh, they gave virtually every fan on the hard cam side a little sign that said, yeah. And so they're chanting it throughout the match and lots of heat for Roman. They're getting in everything that L.A. Knight does. It was a good match, but it was pretty much it was exactly the same what you expect. match. It yes. was, I, I, mean, I mean, it was a good match, but... I, I would say, as far as like the standards of a pay per view main event, I think it fell short because it was so. They, you know, they have their pattern, and this was like almost. Um, what's the word? I don't say parody is the wrong word. Um, I, I don't know. There's there's a word that I'm looking for. It that that this was. It's it's like, it's what they always do, but because it it but but with no twists and turns it was like you know it's like we're gonna have all the interference and it's gonna screw the baby face and he's gonna lose which they always do on in every roman reigns match that's what they do but i think that there was something missing in the sense that in like when the Sami Zayn match or the cody rhodes match while it's going on you still have that feel that like maybe you know, I mean, there's like a, some hope spots and some twists and turns so that maybe you're going to even overcome it like Cody did. In this one, it was like when they were all out there, it's just like, this is exactly what it is. There was nothing where L.A. Knight was, you know, thwarting stuff or anything like that by by the finish. It was just like, this is just what we do. And it's, this is, you know, it, it wasn't even like the Kevin Owens match from years ago. This was just, this is what we do in a Roman Reigns match. It was just a Roman Reigns match. Um, not an L.A. night match. I mean, he got, you know, he sold a lot for him, of course, you know, a lot because he's winning. You know, it wasn't like he squashed him. He didn't, he didn't try to hurt him. But when it was over, it was kind of like I, from a story standpoint, I thought that they, um, I, 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 I thought that it fell short. Well, really, the only person that actually interfered was uh, Jimmy because Solo tried to interfere, but he got held back and then we never saw him again. And then Jimmy came down, and L.A. beat the hell out of him outside, and he bounced his head off the table, and he put him through the table with the back suplex. But then Roman speared him through the barricade, threw him in the ring, hit a second spear, got the pin. And the one thing I will say about the match is they did they did put over L.A. pretty big before beating him. I mean, he kicked out of the well, he, spear. He, 
He yeah, had he, the win with the BFT, but Jimmy put Roman's foot on the ropes, and they played that up but, big. But they, they, that's 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 every Roman Reigns match. Yeah, but they 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 really told the story or tried to tell the story that uh, this LA night, you know, he's going to be somebody, whether he will or not, who knows? Well, but, they uh, have to protect him. He's a big merch seller, and he's over. Yeah, you know, but but it wasn't. Um, I mean, this wasn't close to the Cody Rhodes match or the Sami Zayn match. No, I mean, not even. You know, not but it, but in, both in of those matches, I think that people thought Sammy might win, or even the Jey Uso. Cody I mean, might win. I mean, this was a better match than the Jey Uso match, but the finish of this match, I don't think, was as good as the last few minutes of the Jey Uso. No, match. but it was the same thing actually with the Jey Uso match. Jey Uso and L.A. Knight were the last two guys that the fans do not think that they're beating Roman Reigns. I think the fans on that day thought that Sammy could beat him, but Jey and Jey I'm Uso- sure the fans thought that Cody could beat him in Mania. But, like, nobody thought that, that uh, Jey Uso was winning, and the, I don't the, think anybody really thought L.A. Knight was winning. No, no, nobody thought L.A. Knight was going to win, but but the Jey Uso finish, even though I thought that the match itself was way too long, which is probably why this one was, was shorter, um, because I think they learned from that. Um, you know, they tried to do, but it was essentially we're going to do the same thing that we did, but with Jey, even though you knew he wasn't going to win, I just felt that they they told a lot better story and at the end, people were much madder, I think. Well, for sure. People were furious when Jay lost. Whereas with L.A. Knight, when it was over, it's like, well, you know, I mean, it's what we know. I mean, I sense no no people mad at all. It's just like, that's what it is. Whereas with Cody Rhodes, Sami Zayn, and Jay Uso, it was like after everyone, it's like people were, were furious. WWE, that's it. The bloodline's over. We're never going to watch again. You know, all that stuff, which never happened. And this one... I didn't hear anybody go and tell me, okay, that's it, it's over, now we're never going to watch again. You know, it just didn't seem like, it seemed like, eh, we knew, and it's exactly what we expected. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.